Episode 96, 9 and 6, just a pair of dicks talking shit in a microphone across the other side of the country, bringing you sounds as we vibrate in our throat so you can laugh and giggle and tell your pals it's Cheeky Mal, DJ Gibbo, with the hashtag show do do do. Yeah, boy! <laughs> yeah, boy! Ba, 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 bra, ba, 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 bra. In your sleep, to boy. Wait, I'll just make sure that's on silent. The phone is on silent. The tour manager is asleep. There's no sound to the stop. 1994, mate. Great year. Great year. I'm loving me. that. Great year loving for that hat. Great year for it, music. It was a great year. Um, and one of those years we'll look back on as we're sitting at home, not allowed to go out, walk, or talk to our friends. Uh, uh, I, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw on Facebook. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm confident, 100% confident. 100%. She's a member of the rave team in a hashtag heroin. Uh, posted up a, a, a video of the the crazy bampots, uh, the artists that are the flaming lips, apparently doing a gig where everybody was inside bubbles. Ah, that's an old one. They've done that right ah, at the start of lockdown. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You know, being, being a was... fan of the flaming lips, uh, you know, hey, keep, uh, love, keep tabs on Wayne and the boys, you know. A flaming lip. Is that the guy who did the, does the gigs with the blood? The suit? Aye. The... No, that's... the blood doing them? I see, I hear he's fucking, he's pretty out there, you know what I mean? He's pretty out there, students, man, they like, they like to push the boundaries, no? It's all that arty, farty fucking bollocks, mate. No, listen, they've got a, you know, you know a bit of Stuart McCorney facts here. Yep. The lead singer is called Wayne. He likes two sugars in his tea. But also, mm -hmm. Talk to I don't know how many albums deep they are, uh, but they released many. an album, Yoshimi, Battle of the Pink Robots. Fucking unbelievable album. Run about 2001, 2002. And the one before that, I can't remember one. Actually, I need to dig it out, put it in the page, right? There's a, they've got a brilliant song that's called Something to Do what happens when things get too heavy for Superman? And it's fucking brilliant, man. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, you know, and it's all about, you know, like Superman must have a fucking off day and all, saving the world and all that. And what happens when he's feeling doing? Who looks <laughs> after Superman? Wait, he's more? Well, well, technically it's no, he's more. It's just... Look, look at Superman's all... Superman's a bastard. Do you know what? This is, see bands like this? I love bands like this. No. Do I know any of their songs? Do I fuck? You would if but you heard them. I love them, right? And do you know why I love them? My luckily, Cheeky Mal. Do you know why oh, I love Scott them? Gibson. Because the volume of albums they're putting out. I've got the discography, I believe it's called. Uh, they're, they're, they've been about forever, man. They've done Hunter's albums. First album, 86. Here it is. Oh my God, The Flaming Lips, 87. Telepathic Surgery in a Priest Driven Ambulance. What a title. Aye, for they're to, no, I like it because they are they're artists. They're just putting out. It's none of this manufactured. We'll sit on that. Let's put it out in five years. They'll just fucking hey, we'll just make stuff for five And out. if a hit happens, it happens. It's no that it's no their drive. It's just exactly. fucking releasing music. There's no interest in people going, I didn't actually really like the second album. I much prefer to like, get fucked. This is just it's like I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a band who's kind of kind mainstream. Of a similar artist from Scotland, myself. What I mean you're, but but what I mean is like <laughs> Obviously, I'm thinking off the back of my, off the top of my head, I'm thinking Radiohead and the famous uh, Glastonbury, when everybody thought they were going to play the old album, was it they played OK Computer or the fucking other one, mm -hmm. and everybody was booing them, and then, like, after the album came out, everyone was like, this is the greatest music ever, instead of just releasing stuff that you want to release. I someone think, someone wants to, many... if a fan will, will move with you, you know? A fan will enjoy what you're putting out there. Yeah, a fan, as in a fanatic, will also really get into you and possibly shoot you <laughs> like he did John Lennon. Uh, and I, you know what, as well, I don't think, I, you know, again, you know, hey. we're, uh, we're spinning off into the world of art. I don't think 90 plus percent, if no more, are artists, if they're actually honest with themselves, this goes music, painting, poetry, comedy, any form of arts, I don't think over 90% of them, I don't think they're actually de truly doing what they want to do. I think they end up doing things what they think is going to be perceived as what they should be doing or something that they think's 
comfortable and easy. Very few artists actually do the music that they want to do or the art that they want to do. Aye, mainstream, mainstream. Over to you, Scott Gibson. Yes, no, I mainstream, agree. right across the fucking board. Right across the board. Watch you don't burn yourself on that tea, son. Um, which leads me on to my next topic. Bum sex. Carry on. I'm listening. I'm just kidding on. I don't have anything to say about that. <laughs> Here, I've got, I've got something for you, right? I want, to get, your take, I want to get your take on it, right? Fudge now, packing. Let me just say this. Please remember this as a council episode. Right. So let's just let's just rein you in slightly. Okay, though. We better not mention the old Catholics or the Protestants in this one. You are you are aware of the uh, the, the campaign work that, that that we are you know that you do for the LGBTQ community. Big up the LGBTQ. I've been shouting about them since back in the day. But I wanted to get your take on this. So I um I never Big up even, the gays and the lesbos. I never looked at it like this before, but the T in LGBTQ is for trans people. Uh huh. Right, what, they're into their trans beats and that. They're, they're into their trans beats, the heavy bass George drops. Jules, you know that kind of deep, kind yep, of chest. Of yeah, right. Goes well but, with the glitter of suits. But the, uh, the there is a bit of a, a an issue, if you like, within the, within the LGBTQ trans community because some people don't feel as if the T should be in there because the L lesbian, G gay, B bi, Q Q queer, but the T is trans. And the trans issue is gender rather than sexuality. Yeah. So I just want to get your, your take on that, Uncle Mal. Well, it just fucking shows you when all these nut jobs get together, they'll fight amongst themselves, doesn't it? And it? You try and give them a wee pigeonhole and a wee minute of fucking sunshine, and then they'll start arguing amongst themselves. That's just what's wrong with the human race, which proves that we're all assholes, and it should just be one group of one assholes. Tribe, mate. One tribe, One tribe. One human nation. Human race. What are you into the trans drops and Dave Pierce, Judge Jules, and or you're into fucking getting punched in the asshole with a six foot dildo? Is the mat, mate? One love. It as long as, as, as long one as, love, <laughs> mate. Just keep as long that as I'm struggling with a big shite. As long as there's goodness in your heart <laughs> and Selick don't win ten in a row, nothing else matters. <laughs> Listen, right. you can be a gay, a trans. A fucking whatever, you know. What hey, I mean, you, you can, can be whatever a, you want. You can be if a you're an asshole. I don't care. You're an asshole. Exactly. That that's that needs to be what the new world order is built on. You know. Well, listen. The way things are going, the Orwellian future that lays ahead is gays, trans. But they're they're all going to get shot anyway. <laughs> hey, we're not going. Mate, we're not going to die. We don't. All we're going to be good for is batteries for the combine. That's all we are. We're going I, to get um, milked, milked for a fucking. We're going to end up forced to sit and work in the house, let fucking battery cells run in the machine. What's that? Any form of artistry, forward thinking, thinking outside the box. But well, you could it. even be gay. Boom, bullet to the head. I mean, the, the, the worrying thing is now that, you know, everybody's been forced online, right? Now, obviously, we, we've been doing the podcast long before COVID, right? But my, my fear is that is, if this continues longer, like, well into next year and, and plus there's going to come a point where online censorship is even more than it is now oh aye it's you know just... like we, we'll not be able to say th certain things in podcasts or suddenly episodes will disappear like it's it'll all be yep. like I'm trying out and I'll talk about it later on I'm, I'm going to be doing an online gig right but I'm going I'm thinking about it thing like I can say whatever I want to know but what if this goes on for longer and the government starts to you know, look at content that's been put online because there is, there is a, 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 all right, we've got freedom of speech, but there is like when you go to a comedy gig or, or, a, or, a, or a music gig like, or, a, or a rave, you know, you can have people having conversations there. you can stop the music, you could have a political statement, you know, if you wanted to, whereas you can't do that anymore because live gigs don't exist. So is it going to become censored online? Because, mate, the machines are watching us, mate. They're watching us. Dude, I honestly think there is no return the, the, I'm holding on that there's going to be, right? But I honestly think there's no going to be a return to what we once knew. And I don't no. like using the word the, the, like, ret, uh, like the, new, the new way things or the new future and all that. That's brainwashing part, all right? But I, I genuinely think and I worry that we are getting programmed to settle into this new future that you spoke about. When we will be getting censored, we will be getting told it'll be more extreme. You know, I was thinking the other night there, 
I enjoy doing the podcast like this, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like a phone call. We're having a laugh. But also it's like we're doing it. And it's in, in many ways, it almost feels like the norm now for this podcast. Yep. When when the norm was us with, in my room fucking aye, having a laugh. Also, especially with being literally the other side of the country. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, yep. So, and then I was also thinking... I've been watching some great fucking television and going, this is fucking phenomenal television, right? Just great programming. But what what is great programming? It's just <laughs> it's just stuff to keep us in the house, keep us no, entertained, to stop us out fucking meeting folk, out talking about things, out questioning things. We're slowly falling into the fucking, you know, I, I, I do sound like a tinfoil hat guy. No, but no, we are but slowly listen, being there, there conformed. Is, the, the problem being, see, see because the world that, that, that we live in that's been created, right, has got to the point where because we now have access to so much information and so much misinformation that people have dismissed every conspiracy theory straight away because as soon as you say i heard this conspiracy theory you're programmed to go well it's nonsense when the reality of it is now that we find ourselves in a lot of the stuff that's been dismissed is probably the truth look at it this way right you have got a global pandemic that apparently when it came out saying that it was made by nature right through bats or whatever it is it's, it's evolved a mutation evolved and it's been passed through to humans, it's going to wipe us out. And it's wiping out the most vulnerable and the elderly and the communities. That's been proven that's not the case because young people are dying, healthy people are dying, fit people are contracting it. That isn't the case. Everyone's saying it's like an extension of SARS, but SARS was contained. SARS wasn't a global. SARS was contained. A horrific disease mutated from bats, contained. It had a start point. It had an end point. This is going on forever. So this makes me think and believe this is man-made, this is a weapon, it's biological, it's been released either as a mistake or intentional, and we're now in a position where the governments of large global economies like the UK, like mainland Europe, like America, are in a position where they can end it whenever they want, but they need to keep this going until they can figure out how to benefit the most from it financially. They're saying to you, don't make um, non-essential travel, we're putting you into a tier system where you can't go to the pub anymore. You need to be in the house by nine o'clock. My mum is getting an extension built on her house. That's two contrasting worlds. You can't leave your house without a mask. You can't visit another house. But six builders can come round, knock a hole in her house, build an extension for her. Why is that allowed? Because it's keeping her in the house. Yep. People are IKEA at the weekend mobbed. Barriers up, snaking around. B&Q, couldn't get in B&Q because the queue in the car park. As long as you are doing up your house, making things nice for where you're staying because you know you're going to be hunkered down for, that's fine. Because like you're saying, they are, they want you at home. Aye, we're being programmed to stay at home. Mate, you know, honest, there, listen, whether the truth will come out eventually, I am... No, but this is I, the thing, see by the time the truth comes out, it's going to be too late. Well, all we need, mate. Listen, see if you're a free thinker. See if you like a wee bit of a wacky back in that. You're one of us. Tell your pals, keep smoking and keep dreaming. No, but we're fucked. I don't think there's any, you know, the only way to do it is revolution, is overthrowing the government, right? And let's be realistic. No a lot is why to take that fucking approach because you I'd know. I'd happily take it on, man. I'd happily bayonet up in the street, start fucking. Aye. Right, right, some just, coughs in. just plunging folk. Aye, right? but plunge McNugget. <laughs> <laughs> plunge. But I only came from my show. Look, mate. <laughs> Whack. Aye. Listen, mate, you're wearing a fucking bear cow's mirror peak stab. I'm just standing in the queue for the chemist to get some Johnny bags. Stab. <laughs> you want it aim. <laughs> but, you know, look, I, I genuinely think it's going to end up fucking, you know, there's probably, there is probably free, free, blah, free thinkers who have broke away from all the modern trappings, uh, you know, smart devices, fucking internet, Sky TV, broadband. You know, the problem is people, all the folk, all the loonies that we laughed at are the ones who are going, look, I'm fucking been telling you about this for ages. I was talking to my mate the other day there, yesterday in fact, and I was laughing because I was telling him, I said, see before all this COVID thing carried on, right? We've got a pal who's pure God Squad. I'm talking 
she's writing about it, right? She's signed up. Heavy, she's heavy, heavy. Really, Once a week. Heavy. Heavy do, you know, do you know what a percentage of the wages? One of them. Oh, our Lord, right? my father. And fucking deep. Jeez. Family deep. Look, generations deep in this gear, right? You're set sleeper cell. Oh, <laughs> mate. Right. So, just before COVID kicked off, we were up at her house where we cut a tea slice of cake. And Maria had told me that she'd tell her there's only five years left, right? And I went, come on, eh, fuck. So I, I'm not saying her name. I'm sitting down there. You mean in, 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 in the earth, there's only five years left on earth? Of existence. Until right. the fucking Jesus comes, takes all the good genes, till, and the rest till, is burning hell, right? Until Jesus comes back, he's like, what the fuck have you huh? done to the place? I fucking oh, left my sleep bag down here. I've come down lock at the fucking gaff. When did, the, when, how long have I been going for? A couple of thousand years. What the fuck have you done, man? Where's all the oil? Where's all the polar bears? Where's all the good, where's all the good music about me? The last one was that Jesus rolled the rock away. <laughs> fucking won't heard any hits since I, you fucking cows. I want at least another three albums in my name. <laughs> How's there no a Bible in every hotel room anymore? What's going on? What do you mean you can't say Merry Christmas? What the fuck's happening here? the fox can only should be at least 10 hip-hop albums about big j you fucking cunts what the Trap, fuck is drum what music the... fucking rap about the christ man <laughs> yeah where's my apostles <laughs> get them in here they do right yeah my fucking posse. Aye. what the fuck is scientology <laughs> <laughs> lots yeah, of boys. people Gallardoon, Gallardoon, sitting there, isn't it? You need to do something yeah. about this. Fucking far too many gangs kicking about trying to claim the throne, you know what I mean? Help yourself to bread and wine, boys. Help yourself to bread and wine, boys. Gather in. Hey, listen up. First thing, Scientology. Where the fuck is that all about? Talk to me. Where did it go wrong? Squeeze up. There's room at the back. Come up. The, prob the problem is, Jesus, that, um, you know, we're, we're world famine and uh, the rise of cancer, HIV, Bash! disease. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I was just a laugh. I was mean, having a laugh, man. Fuck's Bash. sake. Next up, John, what the fuck's going on? Well, so that's, it's just fractioned up, Jesus. There's too many. Push! Next. <laughs> What's the no, rest of the no good thing? enough. You, stupid. What's your name? Simon. Right, Simon. Talk to me. Uh, so, because Selig's in nine in a row. Now we're getting to the end of this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're your shit will be phoning my da. Next. <laughs> what the fuck's going on doing here? <laughs> Jesus. It's just no been, it's no been the same since about the 70s. It's about the 70s it just kicked off. When, when, well, since John Lennon got shot, you shot a Saint John, a Saint John down here <laughs> and you shot him. It was your code the bullet was made for. What the fuck he's doing? You can't even fucking pop some gun. Jesus That's, is raging, man. Somebody needs to explain this. I've been on this thing called Google, right, which clearly I invented, but I don't really know how to look at it. What the fuck is Asian Jesus? Somebody want to explain this to me? What is going on here? <laughs> I am black. I've just done a Michael Jackson. I worked on my skin tone because it was better for every cunt, you know what I mean? Mate, how many colour you want me to be a bad cunt? Get some of the wine, come on. Jesus, I thought you'd long hair and a beard. You've got a fucking flat top. I know, mate. I was fucking watching all the Arnold Schwarzenegger films and I've, you know, come back doing it to catch up. Fucking crap. I'll be back. What it is, is, mate, see the boy back in the old biblical days used to do the drawings. You could only do cunts with long hair and sandals. So that's how every cunt thinks I've got long hair and sandals. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So basically, the world's ending, mate. The I world's ending. Anyway, I told we're all, we're all right. stuck in house. And I was like, to here. Because. She used to be like a mad party lassie and just like fucking normal like everybody else. She's she's rediscovered God. And I went, what's with a five-year part? Come on. I don't, I don't want to say her name, right? And she's like, well, that is, aye. She went, five years. I went, you honestly believe we've got five years left? She went, yes. How many years went, ago was this? Th this was just before well, lockdown. All this right. was just before lockdown, right? And I was going, listen, so you've got your house, your mortgage, your parents, you're, not, but you're telling me we've only got five years left? She went, yep. <laughs> God's going to come doing fucking blah, blah. Gave us a oh, phone. The name Started preaching, right? And I was just like, oh, I said, come on, it's me you're talking to here. Fucking hell. Anyway, left there, and I was like, oh, she is in deep. And then fucking the old COVID's kicked off. And you're going, there almost is a bit of doomsday prophecy here. And she she and all her pals are probably going, see, I tell you, I tell you. What is the other signs? Like, it's all like toads and that. And, you, and do you know how 
Part of me is thinking, obviously, another conspiracy. Like, have you watched Attenborough's documentary that's on Netflix? Aye, man. He's right. that's the WWF sponsored him. That's like that Listen. was like that food thing. Don't eat meat. You know that one? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. See, when you're watching it, it's like the thing is the everybody knows now, and if you don't know now, you should fucking what's her face? How dare you? How dare oh, you? Greta Spunkenberg. Greta Spunkenberg. She, that's all fabricated. That was a, a guy picked her out, pushed her forward, made her the face of it. Right for whatever reason, how dare you? The face <laughs> they, shaking, Paul. They, they thought that was going to work, and the vast majority of normal people went, "I work a fifty-hour week, you fucking dick. Shut your mouth. I'm doing everything I can to feed my wings. Get off my back." Right? The world's dying. It's not my fault. So why don't we go after the people who it's causing the problems instead of giving me mere shit? All right. Didn't work out. So now they've gone, they've, they've rolled the dice again. They've went, who's a national treasure across the globe? Attenborough. See when he's doing a documentary, right? They're cutting down uh, rainforests for palm oil so you can make fucking Kit Kats or the I'm polar ice caps are melting right on their tail, whatever it is. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm going, two things. One, <clears throat> we live in a country that is what, 80% green space? The, the, the parts of Scotland that are populated are, are tiny. The majority of Scotland is forest, green it's space. It's a wild country. Right? It's a wild, it's a wild, wild and crazy fucking place. There are other parts of the country, the world, very much the same, right? If you're going to look at overpopulation, which is the biggest problem in the planet, no, no one's going to address that. No one's going to turn into one of these... Uh, vast fucking conferences that you see them going to as well. Another thing you're looking at going, how did they all get there, right? Why are they having this conference? Could they not do it over Zoom? Of course they could. That, that's an industry itself. These people will just be getting paid vast sums of money to travel around and talk shit to each other going, listen, uh, 16 fucking penguins get shot last week. Yeah, we all need right. to talk about it. And they're all like, just oh, buzzword, yes, yes. buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Nothing's getting done, so, just fucking buzzwords. B- how buzz about words. this? How about somebody turns around and goes, right, listen, I can solve the problems of global warming. I can, we can't, uh, we can't really go back, but we can stop the problems we're doing. How do we do that? What, what do we have to do? Do we have to start going to electric cars, become carbon neutral, recycle more? No, no, you need to kill two and a half billion people. What? The, the world cannot cope with the number of people that are living in it. You need to kill two and a half to three billion people. You maybe need to try and half the population of the planet. And they went, oh, we can't do that. Well, it's not I can do for you. Some guy pipes up at back. Oh, you see, I work on this project. It's called uh, a COVID. Uh, <laughs> he's an Italian Chinese guy. I don't know why. He's a uh, uh, bush. Uh, I, uh, I uh, have a solution. <laughs> uh, Jesus, son. I make uh, uh, COVID. I, wa- I work in a small a, a factory in a Wuhan. I can kind of take it back. Where's this country? I take it back. I'm more in the fuck. A whopper a top of your people. You're like, that's 40 quid, son, go ahead. Is that what COVID is? Could be, man. Could be. How, how, do, you, how do you say to the, to the powers that be, you know, you're sitting around there and they go, how, guys, we have to have a working solution to try and save the planet. Because if we are constantly on television going, the world is dying, the planet's dying, we've drained our resources, what do we do? And somebody's went, you know what you need to do? You effectively need to try and get everybody to stay in their house for two years and reduce the population massively. How are we going to do that? I'll tell you how we're going to do that. A global pandemic. I don't I don't I don't I don't think it's as easy as that. Mate, I, I think I think you're the trying to look for more complicated. It is as easy as that. It's just I, I, it's, it's deflection. Look at that wee honey. Look. <laughs> I, know, I thought oh. it was a wee Michael Jackson go. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's Jesus. <laughs> Look at me now, mommy. Come with me now. <laughs> Touch the screen now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I believe. I believe. <laughs> Look at that. He's, he's... God <laughs> has entered my soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Little Jesus things. got a message for you. <laughs> He said, fuck you and your mother. <laughs> Please put money in the basket. <laughs> no, I, it's all distraction. Like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just distracting you for the fucking real life. No, I mean, it's... I'll get superpowers. 
I think it's man-made. It's a, it's a biological weapon. They're trying to keep us in the house. George Clark is responsible for this. He's been in cahoots with being q and Ikea. He's getting paid billions and trillions. He wants you in the house. He wants you dating up your kitchen, DIY. knocking down walls, living in a fucking luxury manner. That's what he wants. As long as you can be sympathetic to your natural habitat. You're George Clark mate. is responsible for COVID-19. He's a whore. But no, go back to your atom, but I think it's just this, the usual fucking shit. Hey, listen, there's sure there's hundreds of be fluffy animals that I don't want to see getting extinct and all that, right? But what they do is, and when I talk about them, I'm talking about them, right? Them. They point the lead, they, they point they point the light of blame on us, the everyday people. Mm-hmm. Instead of going, see these big fucking global conglomerates. <clears throat> How do you know just tell them to fuck up and stop it? Boom, I... end the chat. No telling fucking we rab and fucking Sandra in the house who who like a fucking steak at the weekend, couple of pints and that. It's fucking your fault. No, it's no, it's the fuck. Hey, wait a minute. All the bankers that fucked us up. What, what's happening to them? No, we're just going to give them loads of money and say, well, don't do that again. Or, uh, mate, oh, dude, do listen, <clears throat> look at just now, look at China, right? China, China is going through a, a revolution in its economy and its industry. Right, they own the right? world. They run the fucking tune. So the, the pollution that is coming from China the now through big industry, factory, manufacturing, right, is insane. So the West... Europe, all the European powers, America. What are they got to do? They've got to turn around and go, listen, Attenborough's been on the phone again. You need to stop it. You've got to stop everything. Shut down all the factories. China's going to be like that. But you had the Industrial Revolution 100 odd years ago. So now it's your turn. I, I know, but look, we're, we're, we're past that. Kung Fu Revolution. So you need to stop now. And then China says, well, we're not stopping. What are you going to do? Fuck, fuck, fuck you, lady. Fuck all that. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to do anything. They're never going to go after Amazon, Starbucks, you know, Virgin. They're never going to go after and pay your tax bill. It's never going to happen. It's our fault because you like a fucking Kit Kat and some orangutan's been flung at a tree so they can make fucking palm oil. Now, here's the thing with Amber. See if it is like polar bears, penguins, cats. I'm like, this is terrible what we're doing. See as soon as they start showing me bugs, insects, stick them all in a fucking fire. I couldn't care less. No, interested. I understand it. Helps it. the ecosystem, I, I know. I understand that. Can't you, scratch it back. <laughs> yeah, the bird puts the seeds down and the wee fucking spider squirrel puts all this. I'm like, get every one of them in the fucking oven. Turn that oven on, man. Get the fuck. Don't care. If you can kill it with your shoe, fucking <laughs> burn it. Mate, that should be the level of, like, who exists what after animals COVID. <laughs> I, if it can be killed with a shoe, we don't need you. Is, this, this is it. We're know, building a new... that. Just let it, let it live a wee while longer. <laughs> we're building a new fucking whack. Is he did? He's kind of moving about, right? Move him along. Yeah. Beard mashed up. That should be the next. That should be the level. Everybody in the world needs to line up, take a fucking a shoot of the heat, and if you survive, you, you're allowed to live in a new world order. I, I, that's that's how you the fucking what is it? The, the survival of the fittest. Just getting all slippers fired at you. Right. Oh, took that anymore. Right. I mean, let's move on. Hey, can we uh, do a big shout out to the fucking the hashtag heroes who have uh, recently joined the Patreonskis. We can. Did you mentions. did you have something as well? Did a shout out for somebody that we were meant to remember? I, we did. And now uh, we did. We did we fucking do? totally forgot. Aye. What were we meant to do? It was something really nice as well, wasn't it? I can't remember now. But let me let me just let me hold on. Let me just fucking quickly go into the messages and see if there's uh, any part of them. No. No. Thank you to everybody who, thanks to everybody who has joined the Patreon, who's enjoying the uh, extra episodes. It's the only way to access every single episode from the show is to become a a hero on Patreon. Uh, You go to the hashtag website, you can follow the links there, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash the hashtag show. Um, And that's the only way, like I said, you'll get every single episode from us, including the extra content. And we've got some good, we've got some good stuff. Coming up, me. I've got some right good stuff. I'm going to give the, the, the patrons a shout out, man, right? It's going out to fucking the guys that just joined up, man, helping us out, right? Big Neil, Andrew Cleland, Cy Stratford, Mark Reed, Alan Hindmarsh, Gavin Welsh, Stuart Mullen, Alan Mullen, a couple of brothers there, man. They're just like teamed up. They're getting heavy doses in it, is, man. Brilliant. Michael Dorian. <coughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> oh, coming. Uh, Alan Mullen, Michael Dorian, <laughs> Ross Cameron, 
got him a call, got him a call, got him a call. Dale McKinnon, Jamie Gaffney, and uh, Jake Dixon. They're all, they're one of the latest heroes, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't look at you in the face. But thank you very much, guys, for guys and guyettes. Um, Saying uh, up he, he doesn't head away. Yes, uh, maybe some of you motherfuckers listening and who can do that because there's a new world order and uh, Scott and I need some money to keep the show going, ad free, and fighting the government and speaking freely about uh, revolution, brothers and sisters, and um, gays and bench shots. <laughs> <laughs> These are all big fucking sh- welcome to the show. Big you know? Shout out to the LGBTQ community. Um, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna talk to you about this first, and then I'm gonna send you a picture so you can have it on your phone to discuss uh, with yeah. me while we do it. I'm going to um, actually look into the message that uh, uh, go into one of the hashtag page to see if I can find that message because we talked about it. So it was obviously something, you know, that tickled his pink to actually, you know, to mention. What are you talking about here? We got a message for somebody. Um, it was a lassie, was it? No. Oh, was, a, was it a shout out for someone? Aye, it was a shout. It was a big fucking shout out. <laughs> oh man, it's going to fucking annoy me. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the back of my head. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about your your age. I'm worried about your memory. I'm worried that the wife has been away for less than a week and the beard is getting out of hand. I'm I found it. Scott. Worry about me, mate, because I worry about you and we worry together. Um, it's for Hannah McKinley. Hannah and McKinley. she says, Hi there. Is there any chance you can say happy birthday to my friend, please? He's a Patreon. Find you hilarious and was the prick that ran on stage at the Xmas special last year. Great guy. And he introduced me to you. Thanks, Hannah. So, a um, couple of things. I just want to say... Um, Are they pumping? That was the first question, Scott, right off the bat. That's what Anna, we're all thinking. Is he fired in here? Because when, guys who are in Canada th- pals. No, the Canada pals. We all know fuck that. Fuck buddy. Fuck buddy. Hannah's What's happening buddy. there, Hannah? Hannah, are you trying to pump him? Is he no want to pump you? What's going on, Hannah? Talk to us. How can we help you get pumped? Now, in case you're wondering who Hannah McKinley is wanting us to shout out, who's gaining at it? Aye, who is it? Who is always, this person? Always, he's this fucking denier. rat on her. He's nailing to the wall nightly. Who, who is it's this person? Liam Ross. <laughs> Liam Ross. <laughs> big Liam Ross. Liam Pumping Ross. Hannah McKinley. And Hannah Liam McKinley. Hannah. Could this be three. the first hashtag wedding? Could be. And it's today. So we're, we're all obviously late for, for Liam's birthday. Hey, sorry about that, Liam. But, you know, we don't fucking record shows and request. You know, you have to wait in line. Hey, uh, and Liam. It is a council episode. And you happy birthday. Patreon. Happy birthday, Liam, from your uh, long-term admirer, Hannah McKinley. Yep, she's taking a blowjob. I hope I hope you eventually, you know, work, work through your differences and get together. And good luck to you both. And I'm glad and thanks, the show has, has brought, you, brought you together. Thanks, Liam, for switching Hannah on to the hashtag show. Uh, I'm just uh, pervering through Hannah's uh, <laughs> Instagram page. She's a wee hottie. <laughs> and Liam, you're no bad looking yourself. Oh, there you uh, go. I think this is a picture from you, from you two years at the hashtag show. Was it later that night that he gave you the message? <laughs> There's a wee message and let us know. All the best, Liam. And thanks for mentioning, Hannah. Take care, guys. God bless. Right, moving on. Um, I'll, see you, I'll see you in Las Vegas, Hannah. I was there as well. All the best now. Take care. Well, Hello, luckily. Hannah, who's, that, who's that brown-haired oh, friend of yours? She's a, she's a looker. <laughs> Take care. PM me, thanks. All the best. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> the wife's away. You know what's going cool. Mal, I need you to get out of the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> That's invisible. You're going, you're going to eat pull a blind down. You're like albino, albino Mal. Remember that people are listening to this in audio, so they don't have the, the, the scope of yeah, visual you seeing your stupid fucking face in well, sunlight. You should be a patron and you'll get all the videos <clears> all day. Look. Get out of the sun. I need to see your reaction to this statement. Right, cool. You're not getting any reaction for that face, what you want? <laughs> Step away from the light, Caroline. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That's great. I was a Mal. fan, Scott. I love you. Take care, son. I want to know what you think of this. Yep. There has been a, a, a poll taken. Mm-hmm. Um, where, where this poll's been taken, I don't know. 
Who has conducted himself in this poll? I do not know. Okay. But it is a poll, a national poll, on what is Britain, Britain's favourite dessert. Okay. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Now, there are there are a number of tiers because we seem to like a tier-based system in this now. There is a God tier, which is the top, uh, right. followed underneath by the top tier, a good tier, a mid tier, a low tier, a bland tier, and then the worst tier. Now, within each tier, there are four desserts. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's too many, man. Far too many. Too many but tiers. Obviously, <clears throat> the top is the God tier, a number one. And the bottom, the fourth of the worst tier is obviously the worst dessert in Britain. And I want to get your take on this because... Can we go top three, top, top three, bottom? We can go top three. The top three, according to this poll, are... No, don't, it, don't tell don't tell us because I want to see what my, I think the top three is. Okay. So you know the top three already it, by I've some shit poll. I've got it right. in front of me here now. I'll tell you the new, right? Yeah. I shall tell you this, my sonny boy. Mm-hmm. I would like to imagine in there the top three desserts. No, no, let's not go all fucking beatnik and fucking all the crazy ones that you'd be into, right? I'm talking traditional. No, mate, I, my number one is the most traditional, greatest right. dessert that exists. It's going to have to be something like sticky toffee pudding or cheesecake <clears throat> or a creme brulee. Right, well, I can tell you that. Creme brulee isn't even on it. Right, because that's a bit wanky, isn't it? Leaving the name it. Cheesecake is in the it's... third tier. Yeah, knew, knew, knew it was in there. And sticky toffee pudding is number one. Fucking knew it. Did I not see that? I see that's the <clears throat> first one. No. And it's and I it's think, fu- I think that's a joke. What? Sticky toffee pudding's a great dessert. That is not the greatest dessert. That you can vote for. Right. You, you know no the way. one that's missing. What's the one that's missing? Is that the one you're going to tell me it is? No, sticky toffee pudding's number one. Yes, but you that's know it. what number two is in there. You've no gave us two. Oh, number two is profiteroles. Right. Pure fucking. But then again, right. But right, that's mean, old school of, shit. Of the greatest desserts I know, ever. I know. Aye. And here's but when. I, here's when. I, no, mate. Here's when I realise that this is all bullshit. Because number three is red velvet cake. I don't even know what that is. Exactly. That's some vibey American thing. So this poll's obviously been taken by London hipsters. Here, if you come up with your top three, you're going to get some or something like that that maybe's heard there apart from some Netflix documentary that you've worked in a kitchen way. The greatest dessert ever is Kranikin. That's it. What the fuck's Kranikin? Are you shitting me? It's obviously a Scottish dessert. Aye, it's just, it's it's Scotland's dessert. It's the greatest dessert that exists in the history of desserts. It's it cream, tablet and black it's, pudding in it. It's cream, honey, whiskey, raspberries, toasted oats. Fucking sounds great, mate. It's, I think it I've is, had it. I, I've probably had it I've as got, a. If you've ever been to a wedding, you've had Kranikin. Right. Well, I, I have been to a couple of weddings, but you know, I'm usually steaming before the desserts come out. The greatest, the greatest dessert, and there's no question. It's Kranikin, right? End of discussion. No. Would you like after some that, that I'll tell you what, I gave her a good bowl of Kranikin. I'll if you want a number two... I peeled her pants off and she'd have push her like a bowl of Kranikin. <laughs> <laughs> there was all sorts of things sludging out of it. I had to slap it away before I gave her the dagger. I remember it was Ursula's 72nd birthday and I thought, I'm going to give her a present she'll never forget. I went down on her for two and a half hours. It tasted like Kranikin. <laughs> I'd Kranikin all over my beard and I came back up, but I still snogged her. The only thing that I would accept Kranikin. as a dessert after Kranikin is apple pie. Oh, apple pie standard. But listen. Right. No, hold on. Sticky toffee pudding. Can I add to sticky toffee pudding, right? Hey, sticky because toffee pudding is wonderful. It it's is great. wonderful, right? But did you know, did you know do this? For me, it was like, I fell out of love with it because it became an old did man's you? dish. And then you get become that old man and you love that dish again. That's where I'm at in my life. Here, here's my problem with sticky toffee pudding, right? You can't eat it on its own. You need a bit of ice cream in there. And melt or it cream. Shit. You can eat it yes. on its own, right? No. Whereas most of the other desserts that are on this list, you could eat on your own. No, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to run you off. on your own? Just like stir in the corner? <laughs> just, 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 just yourself crying, you know? <laughs> I lay at night in the room alone, <laughs> just you and the dog crying. Possibly in the corner you know? of the room. Just, you could eat, I, I think a good dessert is something you could eat alone 
Having a cry wank in the corner. Right, that's a good dessert. So, sticky toffee pudding, can't eat it. So, when you need cream, you'd burn, you'd burn the mouth right off you. Right? Oh, aye, aye. Here are some of the other desserts that are on this list. Tiramisu. Just go to the bottom three. Go to the bottom three. No, because I need your reaction to that, so we're going to save that. Tiramisu. Right? That, that is an up there dessert, if it's done right. And eclair. That's not a dessert. But that's a fucking snack. <laughs> you ever Mate, be exactly. a chocolate eclair in the vicar's room? <laughs> <laughs> chocolate eclair in the vicar. Swiss roll. Swiss roll's not a dessert. That's pure Iceland's. But that's good, a snack. Good, well, that's, that's a snack with a cup of tea. Chocolate mousse, also not a dessert. That, that's something you give the wains. <laughs> Arctic roll. No. Okay. No. Well, possibly. <laughs> this is a 70s poll. <laughs> this is a serious, fucking man. Arctic roll. Eating mess. I quite like eating mess. I, I, Spotted I, I dick. That. That's a joke. Rice pudding. I've never had rice pudding in my life. I have rice pudding. I quite, I quite like it. It's just a fucking bowl of rice, isn't it? Now, here is the bottom tier. Here are the four worst, four worst desserts, right? Right, hit me. Fruit cake. Nah, that is shite. A mince pie. Yes, pure shite. Christmas pudding. Yes, pure shite. And do you know what, apparently the worst cake, which I think is shocking. The worst ones are, are already listed. I'm quite pleased with how this is going now. Well, you're not going to be pleased with what is classed as the worst of them all. <laughs> Angel cake. What the fuck's an angel cake? See no, that? that's the that's one, that's <laughs> one of the best ones ever. Mr. Kipling's angel cakes. They are fucking from heaven. Mate, that reaction was unbelievable. Because it's not it's no it's no a dessert. That's a fucking snack with a cup of tea. That is, a, that is amazing. That was genuine horror for you. <laughs> when you I didn't realise what like, it was. <laughs> what the fuck's angel cake? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a government conspiracy. Fuck the, me. That's mate, well, as soon as I saw this, I was like, This is a disgrace. I'm gonna send you the image now so you can see it. When I saw the angel cake was voted the worst dessert, I thought when Mal hears about this, they'll be hell to pay. That that's the one that if we remind listeners, you, you fucking battered through about 14 boxes of them trying to make listen, your daughter a wedding cake. No, a wedding cake, I, a birthday I cake. I attempted to make a birthday cake with it and fucked it because I ate them. But that is that is one of the ultimate snacks with a cup of tea. It's fucking genius. When you get them in the, the Kipling box and there's the two Aye. of them and you just snap it and rip oh. the wee two. Mate, it's phenomenal. And that, but then, that, <laughs> going to what you say, that's Genuine. not even a fucking dessert. That's, no, it's no. It's no. If you went to somebody's house, you had a lovely dinner and then they fucking presented you with one angel cake and a fucking dessert plate and then gave you a dessert knife or whatever it is, cutlery, you'd look at them and have to say... <laughs> <laughs> but hold what? on, but, but but then you need at least six of the angel cakes. Say you say you've been. I've I've sent you the list, right? So you can see it on your phone. Say you're you're at someone's house for dinner, right? Mm. And you have a you have a lovely starter, a beautiful main course, and then they bring out a giant angel cake, and then carve you a massive slice at the table and give you that with a cup of tea. That's what an end to a meal that is. Oh, you'd suck the guy's cock. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's next level. Fucking thank you. Imagine that at some therapy session. Do you know? Do you know when you turn or, or how, what it is event in your life that made you turn gay? Well, this guy brought you a giant angel cake, and I thought, <laughs> fucking, I just dropped it to my knees and put it right in my mouth. <laughs> you know that way when you get your tea just right. He did that, and Annie gave us a big bit of angel cake. What else could I do to thank you and show him my appreciation? I guess the boss right up. <laughs> He'd already confided in me that his wife was not game for that anymore, so I thought, help my brother out. <laughs> angel cake, mate. Bottom mate, of the list. I would leave my wife in range for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I still, I still, I still find it hilarious that you thought. A birthday cake would just be you layering up like fucking Jenga, her as a wee individual angel cakes. No, because I, I thought, because my daughter, Angel, that's why I called her that, because, you know. Because you love angel cake. cake. It was, it was uh, she loves the angel cakes just as much as me. And it's always a fight to see who f smashes them if they enter the house. And uh, I just thought it'd be a great idea to make a sort of Jenga style angel cake birthday cake. Mm -hmm. But I failed because, you know. You can't, them you can't open the angel cakes and not eat them. Mate, it's like crack. It's like crack cocaine. It is. And, but I'm quite relieved because you you identified that poll as shite, quite rightly so, at the very start, because they're mentioning things that clearly are only a dessert. 
No, even like the fact that they've got Madeira cake about four tiers above angel cake is uh, a disgrace. Well, angel, then like, I, I don't know if if I'm on the wrong point here, right? But see, an angel cake, can you get that in cake size? Aye, you can, aye. <gasps> aye I mean, Whereabouts? how do you don't know this? I Asta. don't know. I any, just saw any this supermarket? Mr. Kipling things. No, any supermarket. No. So the, the angel cake itself, Disney have icing on the top. Right. But if you really want to be a fat bastard, you can add that icing yourself. Well, you know... <laughs> that's what you're doing today, isn't it? <laughs> oh, fucking right, man. As soon as I got I just, I just love the fact that your daughter's named after your favourite cake and favorite your son's cake. named exactly. after your favourite nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> what nightclub's called Oceano? <laughs> Must be one somewhere. <laughs> right, but the, the top... Sherry's see when you were going... <laughs> see, see, see when you're doing, <laughs> see when you're doing the bottom three. I was with you 100%. Fruit cake, aye. Keep it in there. Get in the bin. Mince pie. Fucking in the sea. I do Christmas think a, min pudding. a mince pie is a, 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 I do think a mince pie is like an older. I've only started to enjoy a mince pie as I've got older. Jesus Christ. You There's know, like a mince pie? No, you know what that says to me? They are saying they are fucking <laughs> petty in some family house. I, but I don't mean. I, I'm drug. talking against some Marks and Spencer's finest. There's nothing to eat. Finest There's nothing to eat. You through the kitchen. <laughs> There's two mince pies on the table. You're dying, man. Everybody's steaming. You've no ate for days. You've just had a belly of crisps and nuts and alcohol, and there's two fucking mince pies. One's possibly had a bite with it, and you go, fuck it, this is survival. And you eat it for it survival only. <clears throat> and there's a fag out in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, mind a mince pie. I don't mind no, it. I hate, can I uh, ask you something? You, mm -hmm. You've recently been enjoying uh, The Boys. Um, you, have you finished it yet? I finished everything that's out there now. I don't Incredible know. Incredible programming, isn't it? Two seasons. Wonderful, man. But again, like, you're just, I, I'm just gutted it's over. Do you know what I mean? Right. Even even with that waiting for like more to come out. And uh, I, I started watching another show called Ted Lasso. So I, I managed to hold off and then they're just done. I'm like, right. I've not done the Ted Lasso. You can maybe share your enjoyment in that. I want to I just, will. I want to fill that boy's void for you. Okay. Now, I might be a bit late to the party. There's a, there's a just, lot, of, there's a large void for the boys. Aye. And, it's, and, and believe me, I'm four deep, and it's up there. Have right? you not finished it yet? All oh, right, okay, sorry. No, this is a new one. Right, this okay, is a new okay. one. Talk to me. Get this fucking sun out of my face. Right, you ready for this? Uh-huh. No. It's a, it's a, I've seen it's a second series on it. I know I'm late. Yep. And if you haven't seen this... So there's two series it. that they do? Yeah. Right. It's an, a, another uh, superhero twist. Genre. Jean, okay. Doctor. You ready for it? I'm ready. I've got a pen in my hand. Doom Patrol. Fucking Doom. amazing. Patrol. Doom Patrol. It's on that Amazon Never Star Place. Never heard of it. It's fucking incredible. It's another DC comics. Obviously, they've never had the budget until now. Science fiction and uh, super special effects have been able to make this possible. It's fucking genius. Right. Every episode, I say to myself, I wish I was watching this on acid. Because it's, it's so fucking, it's so fucked up, it's brilliant. Doom Patrol, right, okay. Right, basically it's about a fucking, a band of freaks. Right. That this doctor pulls together to sort of help them. Help and them do what? Just fucking deal with their, deal with their inflictions uh, of their strange superpowers. Right. And to understand what it is and what, of what benefit it can be to anybody, if anything. Don't, right, don't, don't get angry. It's all right. And you know, it's, it's amazing. And, and you know, and the end of the world is thrown upon them, and they're forced <laughs> reluctantly to try and fucking help, but they don't want to. They right. don't even know what the fucking superpowers is, or what use, or if they can even be asked helping the world because the world's been a cool place to them. Ah, Doom Patrol. It's fucking amazing. And the shit that happens, you have to watch it with an open mind because obviously the guys who wrote this back in the 60s or whatever, were heavy tripping. It's fucked up. Right, is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon Star Plays. Amazon Star Plays? Which, I think, this is how good it is, right? I watched it on my hooky box. It was skipping. I went, fuck it. I'm signing up to Amazon to watch this full time. Jesus. I signed up to Amazon full time. Then I had to take up an extra contract because it's the shit on Amazon Today, that aye. you need to fuck. What a scam that is, Amazon. Well, you shower of hoors. That's how the guys worth trillions and billions of dollars. 
So you sign up for Amazon Prime to watch these amazing shows, and then the good ones you have to pay even more. That's it. What the fuck? <clears throat> I wonder if it's on my dodgy box. I need a wee, I need it a is, wee look. I've got it in a few dodgy boxes, but it's it's that good, Scott. It's I can't even fuck to any streaming or fucking <laughs> geese it. I will, I will search. <laughs> I will search it. Doom Patrol. Um, I've started Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, amazing, isn't it? Right, it's isn't good. It amazing. It's good. I'm just glad there's so much of it now, so Aye. I can sit and I can watch it and do my thing. It's great. It's a it's a late nighter for me. I'll put it on maybe day three episodes. Aye, because I'll show as well. Night. Aye, and it's fuck. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm sure maybe maybe new twenty years later. I don't know if you find yourself can it, you can you're expecting it almost, and how toe curlingly embarrassing it gets for him. But that's part I, I of the think- charm of the show. <laughs> I remember like watching some at the start and just going like I can't cope with how cringing this is. But that's the like, fun it, about but, it. But I think do you know what I think it was? I think it's because I, I kind of discovered I don't know if you know this me, but I actually discovered Curb Your Enthusiasm when I was watching <laughs> the, the British office. I couldn't right. watch the British office because I was like, this is too too much. Oh, man, right, right? Right. So I think that, that kind of knocked my 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 thinking of what Curb Your Enthusiasm was because now when I've started watching it again, I'm like, this is this is awkward, but it's funny. This is brilliant. Aye. Whereas when I watched Ricky Gervais in the office, I was like, this is just too painful. I can't watch this. Do I don't find this we, funny. I find this horrible. We Curb Your Enthusiasm, but do you know find yourself shouting at the TV, just tell me to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. you, you're Aye. waiting for him to fucking blow. Aye. And he just does that Jewish New York thing where they just fucking shout at each other and fuck all gets done. Have you ever watched the um, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee? No. Is that the Jerry Springer? <laughs> <laughs> no. Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Springer, <laughs> aye. That'd be Jerry, fair. Jerry. That'd be fair. I can't stand Seinfeld, right? I, I, I cannot. I it's his fucking him. whiny voice. But Are I'll, you for real, Larry? I also Do don't you know like who you're talking to? He proper condescends some comics, oh, you know? Anyway, the the only episode you should watch is the one with him and Larry David. Mate, it's phenomenal. Is it? It's phenomenal. See some of the stuff Larry David says? You're like, this is just like an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The stuff he says it, is what, mad. It's just, it's just, do you think he is that guy? Is, that, it, mate, definitely, look, that's, that's his him. life. He's talking about it and saying like, uh, one, one of his ex-wives left him because he wouldn't drink coffee with her. And Jerry Seinfeld was like, What? <laughs> And he went, I don't, I don't drink hot drinks. And she's, and then he's going, I can't understand why this is a thing. And he's like, look, I've got a cup. He's like, you don't know what's in here. This could be coffee, could be soup, could be tea. It doesn't matter. And he's like, just take. He goes, but you don't know what's in there. It doesn't matter. And he went, it does matter. It's the fact that you're sharing a cup of coffee together. We're like, ah, it's rubbish. That's why she left. And I'm going, this is bad. And then, at one point, he laughs so hard he spits his tea into the fucking into the window <laughs> beside him. <laughs> Mate, you need to watch it. It's honestly, I'll, it's I'll so it good. It's so good. Even just that episode, listening to Larry David talk is phenomenal, man. I think he's just a fucking... Is in Seinfeld, am I right in saying the wee fat guy with the glasses was based on uh, your man for Curb the Enthusiasm? Is that I don't, who, mate, I've, I've never watched any Seinfeld, I don't know. I, I, I've watched a lot of the Seinfeld years and years ago, and I think the character in it, the wee guy with the glasses, George, I think it is, that's meant yeah. to be Larry David. Well, I do know that like they met at the a New York comedy club. So he was a stand up. Larry David was a stand up, I. Oh, I thought I never knew that. <clears throat> and uh, Jerry Seinfeld's always been like the industry darling and like the the business plan comic, and he got a deal and offered a TV show, and uh, Larry David was the like the writer on it, the co creator. But I think they got together before when they were doing some writing. When somebody says to Seinfeld, like, you should you should meet him and you should work with him because right, he's right. brilliant. And like a lot of people didn't like Larry David because they thought he was too, you know, blunt with him or too sharp or he was a fucking money old bastard. And they're like, you should work with him and he's one of the best writers ever. He's, he's sensational, he's, man. He's, 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 he's sensational, but he's... No, but it reminds me, I don't know, have, have you, you know, you have to be in a certain mood, in a certain place to appreciate some Woody, early Woody Allen films. Have you ever... Enjoyed the genius of Woody Allen films. I've never got into it, no. I, I think, Mate. again, it's because, see, like, my problem with Woody Allen is when he fucking pumped his stepdaughter, but the, it's the idea that everyone's like, Woody Allen's a genius. I'm going, I don't I don't get it. 
I don't, I don't get it myself. See, this is, this is the, it's kind of like the Cumberland oh Jews my thing, right? I, I know, but see, like, there's certain Woody Allen films, right? Uh, I fucking need to look, look the titles out. And you have to be in a right... A, a right I don't know what it is, if it's a, a right, right level of maturity, the right, right period... What are you trying to say? No, I, I'm just saying, you need to, be, you need to have been, been some, you know, you need to have been through a few things and be <laughs> ready for it. It's, it's a weird fucking thing because I've, I, I, I get obsessed with Woody Allen films about mid-90s to late-90s. Like, I'm totally fucking obsessed, watching them continuously. And then I, I, I bought all the DVDs and I, then I went to revisit them when I, where I was mentally in a different fucking place and I fucking hated them. And right. then I watched them again. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I and I, I go into them, but I, nothing like the time when I, I was in, into, um, into them. The fucking mind blowingly genius. I'm not talking about like the newer ones. I'm talking about fucking Annie Hall. Is it Manhattan? Uh, there, there was a few. He done a run of a few that are just, Annie Hall, Interiors, Manhattan, Stardust Memories, A Midnight, A Stardust Midsummer Memories. Night Sex Comedy, Broadway, Danny Rose, The Purple Rose, Cairo. Broadway Danny Rose, he plays a fucking a booking agent. It's f- honestly, it's fucking Broadway Danny Rose, Manhattan. What's the murder mystery one? The- a mid a midsummer night sex comedy. No, I don't think it's that. Hannah and her sisters, Radio Days, September, Another Woman, New York Stories, Alice. New York Shad- Stories. New York Stories. Crimes in Midsummers, Mids Mids Misdemeanors. Misdemeanors. Aye, that's a belter. I Mate, mean, I can't believe the amount of films he's written. It's frightening, but some of them are amazing, man. It's pure that fucking Jewish American worry comedy, but it's fucking amazing, man. And but I think you need to be without sounding pretentious. You need, you need, you just, you need to be in the right frame of mind just to get into them. Uh, yeah, you got to really just step inside yourself for a moment. You need to have a, like a bagel and uh, you know a couple <laughs> of fucking and some matzo ball soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, get your foreskin cut off, you know, yeah, and get really into it. To really yeah. enjoy Woody Allen, you've got to lose your foreskin and, uh, you know, heavily uh, shaft people over her rents, maybe throw some people out of some, some apartments that you run, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean... Sh- shaves your I, wife's head off, put a, put a wig I, I on I never her, fully you know? appreciated Woody Allen until so, I... Until I, uh, until I turned uh, all my lights off on the Sabbath and cooked my candlelight, I never really understood yeah. the Woody Allen films, you know? I put some candles at the front window and, uh, you know, I don't <laughs> celebrate Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Christmas yeah, mate, is... Listen, uh, I'll, tell you this, I'll tell you this, mate. You can make fun of the Chinese, you can make fun of the gays, but see if you make fun of the Jews, man, they'll fucking come get you, mate. They'll fucking shut you down. No, man, you'll never get another fucking diamond necklace. Oh, I'll show Never, you, mate. you, man. Tell you, mate. One phone call, they'll be like, hey. here. What? I'm sure there's Jewish listeners out there, right? <laughs> See, when you did that with your hand, it looked like you had a wee tiny hand there. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it back. Like that. Like that. <laughs> 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 small behind it. <laughs> a wee fucking flip one. <laughs> a wee horn like that. Oh, I'm sure we've got Jewish listeners. Do you know like the, the sort aye, of Jewish to religions the, to about the council epi- to the council episodes? To the, aye, to, <laughs> shout, shout out to the council Jews. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's like in in in, in the west of Scotland, when you're young, you're you're quick to tell somebody, "I am a Protestant" or "I am a Catholic." I don't actually know very. I've got friends who are, I know clearly know are Jewish because they look Jews. You know the big noses, no, no, I mean, sick, but they, you know, but they do look Jewish, they've got that the Jewish traits about them. I'm talking about, I've got mates all over the world, you know, that's uh, uh, Jewish, it's never been a question. You know? Do you remember the but first thing you Jews, saw? The they, they first never thing say to you, I see, you know, you mate, you support the Rangers or the Celtic, they're like, ah. Israel, mate, <laughs> Israel, mate, Israel, mate. FC. Palestine, they don't, mate. they don't say they're Jewish or anything, like mate, free Palestine. I'm Jewish, mate. I support Chelsea. I remember the first time I saw like Hasidic Jews with the hats and the fucking the the good. And There's I was an like, crazy hey, religion. That's, 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 that's mad. Do you know the first time I saw them? Newcastle. I thought it was a stag do. <laughs> 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 Seriously. 
swear to God, mate, eight boys, eight boys <laughs> walk past the other side of the road, like with the, with the long coats and the fucking big furry hat and the good wee danglings. Yeah. And I say nice to one, boys. I nice say one. to the comic I was with, I went, mate, that is the greatest stag do I've ever seen. He went, that, that's their actual it's <laughs> not stag do. They just fucking hang about the fucking I honestly thought it, it pig, pig lane or something like that. What is it? They were just they were just walking through Newcastle, this bit where we were going to the hotel, but I honestly thought it was a stag do. It's fucking it's any 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 religion let's right off the bat for me, any religion is a fucking nonsense, right? But any religion that also comes with a clobber, a set dress sense, is even more insane. But you know, Hank, see if I was see if you were gonna get into a religion, I'd want one that's got a uniform. Like, I wouldn't want to be like Christians or whatever, but it's just, yeah, just as, you know, wear your best suit and come nice clean shoes. I want you want to just be imposing your like, religion on somebody by your uniform what you've and everything. Got. You need to get a big jacket, a furry hat. Now we're talking. You need to get a couple of danglies going, right? What about a beard? Aye, right? No, right, I'm in. Talk to me. I, I'd want to I'd want to the big hats, but then they have the wee jew bonnet under their hat. <laughs> you know what we're talking about? The wee one that looks like a walk. <laughs> A paper walk. <laughs> <laughs> walk on <laughs> to the synagogue. Walk on. Is that <laughs> paper you know, walk? Here, you. Where's your paper walk? Paper the fucking... walk. <laughs> <laughs> paper walk. Everybody at the Wailing Wall. We go live now to Israel. Paper walks. Walk on to the wall. I mean, man, I moved into a Jewish area and I've been selling these paper walks flat out, man. I'm just fucking big. You sell them in skins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, I've got them in all colours, man. Gold, <laughs> purple. I've got ones with glitter, ones with fucking red hand holster on them. All sorts, I, mate. I even got pink ones in for the birds, then some can't tell us they don't wear the paper walks, no, man. They, they just put them in their purse, mate. They can put yeah, them in their purse. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great, man. They, 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 the birds are using my sanitary products. Nah, I mean, it's all right, man. Under his eye, bless you, but the fruit. They always shout in the paper walk when they fling it at somebody walking by. <laughs> paper <laughs> walk. <laughs> Use it as a COVID mask. <sighs> That's what the old Jews could do, can you? Oh, don't, I don't even know game. if you're allowed. Oh, there you go. I don't even know if you're allowed to say the Jews. Well, I was talking about the, the Jew bonnet. You know, the wee. You can't say Jew bonnet, mate. Can I say Jew? They'll come and get you. you. What are they going to come and get? Hey, listen. You've got a podcast. That's right. Yep. You say the one at uh, Jew bonnet. <laughs> what, that's what we more? should call that's what we should call this episode <laughs> <laughs> the Jew bonnet <laughs> and and you know me and my people were no happy with that I'm sorry no, no, but but me, I meant I meant Jew as in like the morning Jew like D-E-W, I, no as in like the mad cunts that no, are killing all the Palestines I'm, I'm not having that crack at the 22s man I'm talking about the Jews <laughs> in the grass man Orthodox Jewish men always cover their heads by wearing a skull cap known in Hebrew as a kibah or, a, or in Yiddish as a yarmulk. <laughs> Yiddish. E, uh, liberal or reformed Jews see the covering of the head as optional. Most Jews will cover their head when praying, attending the synagogue or at a religious event or festival. I watched some documentary about the Jewish faith. I think it must have been the Orthodox one where it's like the full, full on thing. Is that the and one then, set in, in Williamsburg in New York where they've taken fuck, over like the whole? Fuck knows, but it's the two sinks, one for washing things, it's non-kosher and one uh, for yeah. washing things. And it's, two, it, it's in a right Orthodox Jews house, two washing machines, it's fucking two everything, two fridges. You have to be rich for a start to have two everything and in a big house. But, but they are. But that's, that's, that's religion. Yeah, listen, if you're a fucking Jew they're listening, I'm sure you probably think other religions are mental. I, I, I just, I struggle with fucking any form of religion, any form of you must do this, I have a problem with. The the, the Jewish religion is, is fascinating because of all the different like laws and rules they have. Do you mean, especially like the, like the Sabbath, like you can't have, you can't have electricity on, so they can't have any electricity in the house and things like that. I mean, how fucking insane is that? I know. It's my bit like, fucking freak me out. I mean, that's God. That's God coming to get you. I, 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 what is it? You know, like all these religions, what are different rules? 
Big G's going to come down his lap here. He's yeah. all making a fuss about fuck all. Yeah, you There's think. a rap album's about no, it. Yeah. That's what I want. Jesus is going to come back and he's like, what's happened with the Jews, boys? Are they all gone? No, 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 Jesus. We all live in harmony. They fuckers try to kill me. Look at my horns. They hammer nails right through the fucking I palms. I one job. I sent Adolf down here with one job. What happened? <laughs> Adolf's beside Jesus. Hey, Adolf, I, they I did not my, listen to me. I tried. <laughs> what is this, Spanish? <laughs> hey, Mr. Fulte. <laughs> <laughs> Adolf. Manuel Adolf. Manuel Hitler. I, I try my best. I try my best. Jesus. I say, I don't know. <laughs> I'm watching. They tried to kill all the Jews. They said, no problem. They said, hey, hey, hey. I tried my best. This. Hitler would be so much better if he was a wee camp Spanish guy. I tried to kill the Jews. I'm a sorry. I'm a sorry. Hi, Hitler. <laughs> Just flings it up for the hip. <laughs> Everybody together. Hi, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a great day. Bye bye now. <laughs> How you try to be beat a bread with the fish on Instagram? Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only Hi Hitler was a gay Spanish <laughs> dictator. Aye, there must be there must be a, a gay Spanish guy called Hitler. There must be. <laughs> yeah, there's a name that nobody calls away. Not then, you know. You'd be That's surprised, mate. Definitely died out. No way. No way. Is there anybody the new called Hitler? I'm going to Google it. That's genius if there isn't there. What's your name? Hitler. What? <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, Hitler. Hitler. Hitler McEwen. <laughs> Hitler Mc... <laughs> Hitler McEwen. <laughs> where, where are you, Postal? Aye. Aye. Clyde Bank, where, mate. Where was... Uh, my dad runs a, a laundrette in Clyde Bank. What's your name again? Uh, Hitler, Mc Hitler McEwen. Um, the though Hitler is an uncommon last last name, uh -huh. especially since World War Two, it is not unheard of. The 2010 census recorded fewer than 100 people across the United States of America who uh -huh. have it. 133 people spell it as Hitler with a double T, according to the Newsday database. Does right, so anyone Adolf, have a name? So I'm getting that's how how fucking stupid I am. Adolf was Hitler's first name. So uh, maybe he's calling the reina Adolf or Adolf. Of course they are, mate. Of course they are. No way, man. Uh, how many boys have been named Adolf? Here we go. Let's see what this says. Let's give it a minute, mate. I'll let, I'll let I'll um, <clears throat> that's fucking... Shut up. Go away. How many people are called Adolf? The name has become vanishingly rare since the I Second World War. Say. Official records show that only 13 children were named Adolf between 2006 and 2013. It has made a small comeback in recent years with 46... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We are cut like groups of supremacists. It's on their eyes. <laughs> it has made a small comeback in recent years, with 46 children named Adolf since 2013. Fucking hell, man. Mate, and that's in the Telegraph. That's in the, U that's in the UK. How many heavy doings are the Wayne's getting? Mix, sent into a fucking, obviously, a mixed school. Here, here's here's it's something. It's going to be like a fucking, a prodigy school or something. They just here's take anybody. We adults in there. Non denominational, mate. Here's something that's quite interesting. Uh, is it illegal to call your kids Adolf? Um, while the UK does not doesn't have any strict laws around names, a name is likely to be rejected if it causes offence. So this is probably one that would fall under these restrictions. I which which can be the case if forty six kids have been called. Now there's a Netflix documentary I would watch if thirteen children between two thousand and six and two thousand thirteen have been called Adolf. Find those thirteen and Find tell me the what they're up to and interview them. Why? Here, Maybe, here, but do you think they called it for a laugh? No, they're obviously fucking heavy nut jobs, heavy white supremacists. They're probably staying off the fucking grid with shotguns and, and Waco or some nonsense like that. Some mad kind of set up. Here, listen, I've been watching Louis Farou and all. Aye, revisiting some Louis Farou. Do you remember yep. the one? <clears throat> I've went on a tangent here, white supremacist Louis Farou. That's how I got to this point. I watched the other night there and really enjoyed it for a second time. The one where Louis Farouk goes to Vegas 
and he meets the fucking heavy gamblers to yep. the old woman, to the two guys at the tables, to the big high roller. Yep. And then the guy's driving a taxi. Well, I actually it searched it and he's a fucking Uber driver. I don't uh, know how real that is, but you're just thinking to yourself, well, these guys are heavy addicted to that level. It's only a matter of time before they lose everything, man. Everything. Everything. Like, it, it, mate, the, if, you have got, if you have got one ounce in your system that is prone to addiction or chasing something... Or you're fucked. If you have got money and you go to Vegas, game over, man. I would rather game be... Game over. I would rather be addicted to sex, chocolate, or something like that than than, than fucking gambling. Than gambling. Oh, of course, man. Of course. It's realistically, right? See if you're addicted to, say, for example, heroin. Right? Let's say you're addicted to heroin and someone else, same age, same financial situation as you, right? So someone in the exact same life as you is addicted to gambling. And you both are at home just now in lockdown. Think how many times in a day the gambling addict will be subjected to advertising for gambling. Aye. Just in one day. I just triggered for fucking Every day, checking man. their phone TV adverts. Constantly. You uh, never get bags of brown fucking show on Channel 4, do you? You don't get just watching the fucking home nations like that. England today, sponsored by a bag of brown. Cooking up that wee fucking cheap spoon like that. Yeah. Know what I mean? Get into your get into your downstairs toilet and there's a pure fluorescent light in there going, I'm just trying to take a shite for God's sake. But <laughs> what was good about that fucking Louis Ferru thing is him just quite you know, he's got such a skill of just talking to somebody but getting the right answers and the way the camera catches their expressions. There was a bit in it where he met, meets these two guys on the, and what was mad about it as well, I, st- I stayed in the, the MGM when I was over in Vegas. So I, I knew the, the layout and all that, you know. And there was these two guys who came to Vegas and one of them looked like fucking right out that TV show, that film actually, that I can't remember the name of, with, with the actor that I can't remember the name of. Oh, this is great, man. This is great radio. I know, I fucking lost it. Anyway, but anyway, so he's... You could just tell that guy was in the depth of an illness of addiction mm-hmm. to gambling. Mm-hmm. He fucking, he, he met him, he never, he left him, he'd been gambling right through the night, right through the day to the next night. He couldn't have even slept Aye. and he's still fucking gambling. <clears throat> Mate, you see the ones even when they're going through the casino and they're like, he's sitting, feed, just feeding hundred dollar bills Aye. in it. He had, no, he had like three machines Aye. and he was Aye. just going like that, talking to the guy. Mate, you fucking burning money. I've told you before, we went through a kind of bad phase. I wasn't too bad because I've, I've never been great with money, right? So I probably lost it before I fucking even tried to go and gamble it. My, a friend of mine who's always been bad in the, in the gambling phoned me one night, like in the dead of night, at like midweek, like two in the morning or some midnight, whatever. Yeah, go, we've got a winner. He says, mate, you need to come to the casino and pick me up. <clears throat> I went, what the fuck are you doing in the casino? Because that's when I knew he had a problem. Because we used to all go together. And then when he started going to sell, I was sale, like, why? there's a problem here. And uh, he'd won something daft like a couple of grand. And see, by the time I dro- drove from my mum's house in Renfrew to the city centre, which at that time of night when he had traffic, you're talking, what, 15 minutes? He'd lost something like nearly two and a half grand. Plus the two In that space up. of time. <clears throat> because... Again, ev- everything's designed to everything's designed to keep you there. So, for example, if you're playing, you know, or even if you're no winning, even if you're losing, f- free food and drinks, they give you a drink, you know, soft drinks or alcohol. They'll bring you food, you know, keep you there, bring you comfortable. Then they have members of staff coming over. Now, this is just UK casinos checking in how you're doing, sir, I've been okay. And you're like, fucking hell, I feel like fucking Frank Sinatra, man. This is amazing. Aye. And now, that is a thousand times fold in Vegas. Then when you get paid out, they'll pay you and, you know, they'll change it to like hundred dollar chips or thousand dollar chips. So you're not going anywhere with that. And it's all about trying to keep you there. Try to keep mm-hmm. your gambling. Can we open up a table for you, sir? Can we move you here? And what, what can we do? See, can see, when I, see, when I was in Vegas, I, thankfully, I'm not a gambler. At, at Disney, I would rather fucking play an arcade game than gamble, right? I would imagine if I, if I did dip my toe into it, I probably would get into it, right? But yep. I don't know I don't know the rules of the game. Hold, hold on. Hello. My missus at the door. Is this recorded? 
Are uh, you all right? Sup? I'm going to get. I'm going to get a subway. I think. Yes. Well, you might just wrap up. Okay. We'll just we'll two minutes. We'll wrap up. Mal's here. Oh, hi, Mal. Hello, hello. Say hello. <laughs> I'm hello. Going to, I'm going to edit this video now. <laughs> no, I keep it, and that's a real. I love the real. Right. Um. Just right, to wrap it up. Wrap it up. What were you going to say about Vegas? I, 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 I was in Vegas, right? And I quite what also you work out quite quick. You go up to a table, they give you free drinks. So I just mm -hmm. went on a few tables and got hundreds of free drinks before I went to the club. Mm -hmm. But what fucking only spending like minimum twenty bucks. I didn't even know what the fucking rules were. But what was mad is only way from my hotel. <laughs> so I would leave. When do the birds turn up, mate? Where's the when do the birds get here, mate? <laughs> So, so the people who own these machines, right next to your doors that would take you to the rooms, I would see them in the morning. I would go about a full day in Vegas, dinner back, going in home at night to get changed. They're still in the same machines. Oh, yeah. I would up, get changed, have a sleep maybe, get changed, then go to a club, come back for the club, five, six in the morning. They're still there. I know. And I was like, holy fuck. You know, I wanted to say, what the fuck are you doing? But that's what... There's a mentality in America where people save up, go to Vegas, and fucking blow the lot. I uh, take take the, the minute, take the punt. For the minute you get off the plane, see actually mm. the airport terminal mm -hmm. in Vegas, it's a casino. Uh, Straight into short slot machines and tables. It's fucking insanity. I could, I know. I could not believe it. <clears throat> it's uh, the, the only thing we used to do that I enjoyed was see we we found out if there's four of you together in a group, they'll open up a table for you because you ah, can okay. sit four at a table, and then it. So you effectively what's known as control the table. So you can set the limit. So what we used to do is we used to go to either the riverboat or the one at Tiger Tiger. And we used to go and say, could could you open a table for us for blackjack? And we would set the limit to 50 pence. And we would just sit there so every hand was 50p. They'd be fucking raging with you, but no. Well, here's the thing. Fucking... They would be raging, but mate, we would be there for four or five hours. They were not, and you only spent about three pounds. No, because like you can obviously you can add to your. Hey, we got some big spenders here. You can add Hold to your. the drinks with these cunts. Just saying, them pot noodles. Listen, you're talking a Tuesday night. They just they just want you, and then you buy some food and you buy some drink, and do you know what I mean? But I I quite enjoyed it then because you're playing with your mates, you're having a laugh, and there's no real big things. But when people used to do like twenty pound a hand and fifty pound a hand, you're like, this is this is just stupid, man. But then yeah. to be in that position where you've got that much money, it's also quite it's also quite. It's quite sad. Do you know I mean it's quite worrying that there is that just continued, even new evidence going to the world, there is that continued level of extravagance where money means nothing to these people. Yeah, My missus was telling me a thing about the other day, right? Where she's on Reddit a lot. She leads a, leads a lot of articles on Reddit, and there's some there's some mad stories across the world. And this guy was in Venice, Venezuela, right? And he was on Reddit, and basically, cut a long story short. Situation in, in Venezuela is insane, man, right? Like, the, the average wage, I think, is a dollar a month. I think that's the average wage there, and it's full corruption for the government. A and, month? And sat me a month, right? And they were explaining that the the food costs, the average weekly food costs about a dollar twenty. so they're always constantly in debt with people, right? So, long story short, somebody had sent this guy $5, and he couldn't believe it, right? And... Some people were thinking it was a scam, and he posted a picture up of the food that he bought with the $5, saying that this money is going to help him and his family for the next couple of months. So somebody else sent him money, right? So effectively, this guy got like $40, say, right? Blown the guy's mind. His mum paid her debt off. Now, this is debt for money that she had used as tick, basically, for food, Right. So he's on this Reddit page going, I can't believe he's have done this. Thank you so much. And and someone said to him, listen, be careful to us. $40 is fuck all. But obviously in your situation, you know, that's a lot of money. So make sure, you know, you're not telling people about it and what's happening. And all I'm thinking is the now that there should be some kind of network or way that you are able to not sponsor somebody because I think that's been really cheap and crass going, oh, I sponsor we family in Venezuela, but being able to send five dollars do you mean or have that connection in the world that things like that still shouldn't exist but if that was an official thing set up going like if you I log on this siphoned, website siphoned away and other people exactly, need the money and exactly people need, you know I mean? don't get fuck all 
Exactly. But you, you've you got somebody who is no begging. He's just going to tell his story. Somebody sends him $5, which then builds to $40, which changes this guy's life in the in the short term. And you've got a guy good at spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on fucking gambling. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking shocking, man. Shocking, mate. Uh, surely shocking. it's not a pound a month. No fucking a way. Do- a dollar a month, eh? A dollar a month. I would send guys like Hunter Quid and all that and just watch them tear down the fucking neighbourhood. <laughs> you know, that used, that's how wars are, that's, there you go, that's how wars are starting. Countries in the kind of countries investing a few thousand. Fucking go and burn that place to the ground. Go and do that, go and do that. They're going to do it. Cash is king. Uh, and on that cheery note, thanks for listening to the Hashtag Show, episode 96, with myself, Cheeky Mal, and my big pal, DJ Gibble. Thanks for listening, guys. If you want to get access to every single episode, become a hashtag hero on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash the hashtag show. Go to the website, follow the links, sign up. It's worth it. You support the show, you support us, and you get every single episode. All the best. Take care. Do you know who I look like? A fucking... Jonathan Wass. A leper. That sun has just followed you around that, around that room. Oh. Right. Bye now. Oh, is there any white plug? Because I need, I need to plug something before we go. Buy one of my t-shirts. Buy one of my CDs. Uh, what buy about some a wee of my 1994 hat? Oh, like that beautiful 1994 hat, Scotswear, or my acid cap. Uh, you know, I'm not begging for money. You know, I'm selling something. You're getting something in return <laughs> for supporting me. Thank you. October 24th, I'm going to be doing a live streamed online gig. Um... Can't wait. Cyber. Doing it myself. Or is it myself. No, stay me, mate. Just fucking run solo. tickets for it. Uh, oddly, it's going to be streamed live through my Patreon. So the only way to be part of the gig and watch the gig is to sign up to my Patreon. You can do that for as little as five dollars. Go to Scott Gibson. Oh, Scott Gibson Comedy dot the UK. Follow the links on there. But that's going to be October twenty fourth, eight thirty p.m. I'm doing a live comedy gig streamed into your eyeballs via the intraweb. Uh, what night is that? It's a Saturday night, mate. Oh, good. Cut the cans in. Cut the cans in. Drink poo. Now, I mean, we, we Chinese sit down and watch the big man go mad for an hour plus. On Can people Batman. interact with you? Can they send you messages during your show or are you just oh, going to yeah. sit down and do a show? I'm going to do a show and then I'm going to have a wee bit of interaction with the audience. I'm also going to be taking suggestions on topics the week uh, up to the 24th. And after I've done a little bit of stand-up, I'm going to riff off some of those topics to try and get the old improv muscles working again. So, Beautiful. again, the only way to interact with that, get on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson, October 24th. Good luck, Good luck with that, young man. Let us know how it goes, yeah? Thank you very much. Right. Share it in the pages. Share it in the Take pages. care, everyone. See you all soon. Whether uh, you're a Jew or a Catholic or a Protestant, <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this episode. The fuck off. Hare Krishna. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good